Hello friends, those back pages here. I hope you're well. And tonight, we're going to be talking about Flagship. Let me clean this up and let's get started. Alright. What is Flagship? Let's see, let's set this up this way. Alright. What is flagship? For those of you that are new to the hobby, <clears throat> or returning after a significant amount of time, first I want to say thank you for being here. It means a lot to have you as part of the uh, friends of the channel. Thankfully we're getting more friends all of the time and trying to spread the good word about collecting because I think we're entered a phase now where collecting is cool. For a lot of people it is a uh, monetary incentive and that's okay. For some of us we enjoy collecting because you know it gives us distraction from real life and everything that that brings. As well as uh, enjoyment of physical items. So uh, let's that's enough blabber. Let's let's get uh, let's get on topic, Eric. What is flagship? Flagship is what we call what we used to call back in the day tops Donruss Fleer. You know, from uh, fifty six to eighty, it was tops. Yeah, of course there was OPG and other stuff, but for the you know I'm speaking in general terms here. And oh, and by the way, I I'm speaking everything that I pretty much ever talk about on the channel is my opinion. I don't state these things as fact. I never recommend do as I do. But for the most part I think it's turned out alright as far as my collection goes. So yeah. What is flagship? Flagship is like I said what we used to just call tops. But, you know, nowadays, probably the last 15 years or so, actually probably closer to 20, or even 30, depending on who you ask. Multiple, multiple, multiple releases per year. As of right now, Topps is the only company allowed to make MLB cards, Major League Baseball licensed cards. Get to that in a minute. Panini is the only manufacturer of football and basketball, and Upper Deck is the only manufacturer of hockey. Will not be showing any hockey today. I just did not feel like digging those out. And I've talked enough about soccer recently that I will not be discussing soccer tonight. So let's start with, with baseball. <clears throat> Baseball Tops started making regular baseball cards in 1952. I know they made a few game cards before that, but for the most part, what you see today, <coughs> excuse me, is the result of 1952 Tops. And again, I won't be going into the history of these sets. And this is a general going over of uh, of flagship because I've seen it a lot recently with with the resurgence of Fernando Tatis Jr. A lot of people have been going crazy for his cards and I will give my opinion on that and again my opinion and my opinion only but let's get underway. So we've got 1952 tops. There's your I guess it's debatable now if this is still the most expensive. It's between that and, and this now is the most expensive tops. Baseball rookie card would be between the Matthews and the Mike Trout. Would probably be you could you could say one or the other is the most expensive raw version of uh, a flagship tops I mean I'm sorry of top fl eh, top flagship baseball rookie card so what I consider a flagship 
rookie card is a pack issued or a set issued rookie card. Well, I'm sorry. Pack issued or a set issued card to the general masses. There are limited, you know, limited, uh, like Sapphire started in 2016. <coughs> is that a rookie card? Yes. But it's an expensive rookie card. What you see here, Trout, well, Matthews has been expensive for a long time, but Trout was not expensive eight years ago, seven years ago. It was not expensive. I apologize, and I do not envy anyone who is entering the, the hobby now to try to start collecting. Very difficult. I fully admit that. Very difficult, very expensive. Fortunately, I've been collecting these things for a very been collecting slabs for 15 years, so I've been very fortunate in that regard. I try to stay on the path of collecting what I like and what I enjoy. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it does not. In this instance, it has paid off. So you've got the 52 Matthews. Here is a Roberto Clemente rookie in a PSA 1 because of the pinhole here so whoever owned this back in the day decided they wanted to put a, a, a whole pinhole in there maybe put it on a keychain or something but the only thing that did was keep the price down and again if you want to collect raw there's nothing wrong with collecting raw collect how you like you know the pitfalls are well documented on on uh, collecting gradeds, not collecting gradeds. I mean, it, it, you, there's a lot of semantics in it. You know, here is the Ronald Acuna flagship rookie card, available in Series Two packs of 2018 tops flagship, all formats for the record. 2019 Series Two, so the release of the Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the fat boy, he's affectionately called on various social media outlets. This is uh, was supposed to be card number 700 in Tops. According, quoting Tops, they, well, according to Tops, they told me they initially forgot to put the number on there. And again, this was only available in packs of Series 2, all formats. About five times easier to get than this was not hard to get. This was not difficult to get. This was five times easier to get upon release. It's scary to think that a couple of those are a couple of years old. Well, going on a couple of years old now, depending on when you're watching this. Now, I can't remember exactly, but I want to say the late 70s, or mid to late 70s, Tops started issuing their flagship set in a factory set form. <coughs> so you would go to the store and you would buy a factory set and it would give you all the series one and series two. I'm keeping it simple. It would give you all the series one and series two cards. So that means if you went to the to the Target, the Walmart, last year and you bought a, a 2019 factory set this is the wrong the wrong album that's a fail right there whoops <clears throat> here it is it looks the same on the front if you bought a factory set you got the Tatis this is the flagship rookie that is going crazy right now in a PSA 10 for reasons I cannot explain because there is one of these in each and every factory set. There's also a bonus card. There's a few different, but for the, 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 the purposes of this video, there's one of these in every factory set. There's not one of these that I just showed you in every factory set. There is an Alonzo in every factory set. Who else is in here? Guerrero is not Eloy. I don't have a. Do I have a base Eloy in here? I do not. 
that's the holiday, but it looks like that. That is in there. Riley is from the high number, it's from the update set, so he would not be in a factory set. But each and every factory set is going to have, and again, I believe at the, at the time of this recording, the this and this card in a PSA 10 is selling in the $300 range, which is completely silly. I was gonna swear, but completely silly in my opinion. I pack pulled that last year. Not difficult to do. Just open some packs and enjoy yourself. Try not to make a mess. Uh, speaking of pack pulls, here you go. Here's another one. I see people going crazy for this. This is a base Luis Robert Lubob flagship rookie. So 52 to 2020 Series 2 and everything in between. No, no wrong way to collect, but that's the way I would go about collecting flagship rookies. Now, there are variations. There are like... Uh, Tops Gold, this is a Tops Gold Tatis. This card is very popular right now. It is numbered on the back to 2019. The Lou Bob has a version that would be numbered on the back to 2020, etc. There's a Trout update that has numbered to 2011 on the back. You get the point. So, this is going to be the factory set for 2020 tops is out next month and each and every set is going to have one of these in there there is really no reason to pay 20 or a year they're going for 20 to 30 dollars a piece absolutely no reason to pay that there'll be one in every factory set and you could open some packs all right let's close out baseball you've got tops chrome i just grabbed a random rookie card from tops chrome this is Acuna, Topps Chrome, started in 1996 and has run consecutively. That's important, in my opinion. Continuity is very important. So it kind of eliminates a lot of brands that you and I know because either they stop making them or they're just not around anymore. But Topps Chrome, which started in 1996, you know, I. Offhand, I can't say it has every single rookie, but for the most part, obviously, ironically, it doesn't have Trout. And if there was a 2011 Trout Tops Chrome, we probably wouldn't have be having any of this conversation about the popularity of pa paper. That was for you, Randy. So, closing up the basketball, I mean, sorry, baseball is uh, Panini Prism. Technically, this is, gets a little tricky. I could do another video on Prism Baseball, which I'm a huge fan of, the singles. Um, this is the silver parallel version of his Prism rookie card, which was distributed in Chronicles, as you can see on the flip. So it is a little complicated. You know, it's not as straightforward as flagship tops. Just going to the store, grabbing a pack of tops. It's not the same. Uh, it's a little more complicated, but I really feel that, you know, they, Panini, I get it. You know, they're not for everyone. They're, oh, no logos, no, no, no logos, no interest, none of that. Eh. This is the 2020 Prism Trout Silver. I mean, no logos, but etching. I mean, look at the etching on this. You can see on the letters on his jersey, his Acuna Jr., his uniform number, the pinstripes on his pants, even around the dirt. There's some pin. There's some etching. It's I don't know if we'll catch it on the camera. Okay, we go. Whereas his Topps Chrome rookie, there is no etching. It's just what there, there's etching around, outlining the player, but there's no, there's nothing on the pin on the piping anything. So it's night and day. I understand this is a silver and this is not a refractor. I should have pulled out the refractor, but here we are. Okay. Speaking of Prism, <coughs> Prism started in 2012. Now, Topps Chrome, well, 
right, I'll go over football first because I don't have very many to show. Topps Chrome Football ran from 1996 until 2015 when Topps lost their license to produce NFL cards. Panini took over 2016, but four years prior in 2012, Panini launched their their personal, in my opinion, their flagship issue called Prism. Prism Football 2012. Now all the sports across 2012 look just like this, which is nice. You know, there's there's no shine on this because it's a base card, but there is etching. I cannot stress how much difference, stress how important it is, how much difference the etching makes. You don't know until you, you, you realize it's not there. So in 2012, and in the baseball, basketball, and football, they introduced Prism. Which, you know, was different formats, but for the most part, it was like Topps Chrome. It was, a lot of people were like, well, it's just a ripoff of Topps Chrome. Well, that may or may not be right, but it is what it is. And within the last six months, Prism... This card, you know, I purchased this card probably about a year ago for $18. It's worth a lot more than $18 now in a 10. I bought a 10 because I couldn't find a 9. There were no graded 9s available. So Prism, in my opinion, oh, and it's, oh, let me go over that real quick. From 2012 to 2015, eight months ago, nobody cared obviously by the price I got this for it was Topps Chrome is king but that has all changed in the last six to eight months it's unbelievable how much it has changed but if you're picking one flagship for football I would go with Prism some say Optic Optic is uh, a brand they brought out in 2016 the year prior to this which is this is pretty much Donruss Chrome they brought back Donruss which is a relevant brand again thanks to this man and Luca they pretty much saved the Donruss brand as a whole which is pretty pretty interesting and topic for another time but these started in 2016 and these started in 2012 so Prism had a four-year jump on optic and that's that's just gonna be tough to overtake now optic does not have etching it has tops chrome etching where it's just the outline of the player and on the borders but it does not have player etching and to me that makes a big difference even in shiny version of this card now, here's the 2017 it gets a little complicated and that's why guys like myself and others collectors are here to help you if you have questions please please leave comments down in the section in the comment section um, you can always email me at those back pages at AOL.com if you have questions I'm always glad to help out and help you guys learn because you learn by doing you learn by sharing you learn by doing this all the time you know, you, you learn by repetition and just almost like osmosis. It's very important to share your knowledge because it gets confusing. Because in 2016, when Prism Football, and this is exclusive to football, in 2016 when their football came out, the year prior to this Mahomes, all the rookie cards looked like this. They looked like what we know as silvers. There were no, it's, and it's ironic because in the 17, this doesn't have any shine, which is, that's a whole nother, whole nother can of beans that we're not going to discuss tonight. But every single rookie card from, from, from 16 and 17 football, prism football, this is exclusive to prism football, every 16 and 17 rookie card is only a prism silver. It's not available as a non-silver. That's something that even PSA screws up with the flip. So there is no non-silver version of this card. Which, 
in the end, I guess it helps. But it's very confusing because there are people that only collect the parallels. So, you know what I'm saying. So this was a, uh, this is the red, white, and blue parallel, which Prism started in 2013 across all their brands. It was not in the 2012. So this is another set. It's actually not very popular, to be honest with you. It's The pricing on these are way behind the other parallels. These, and in my opinion, these and the green should be a lot more popular than they are. But they aren't. And here we are. It is what it is, right? Just makes it easy collecting. So, all right, let's get on the basketball. We're going to go over. These are kind of out of order, so you'll have to forgive me. But, you know, 2012 saw prison basketball, which, you know, you know what it is now. I mean, if you don't, you're in for a shock, a sticker shock if you start looking these up. Some people have said, and rightfully so, this is the 19, 1986 Fleer basketball of our time because of the sheer amount of rookies in this set. Anthony Davis, because this set came, this, this, the 2012 NBA Wax 12 13 season came off the lockout. I think it was the lockout, not a strike. So there were no rookie cards for the 11 12 season. So this was a double rookie class. So you had the Anthony Davis, Damian Lillard, Clay Thompson, Kyrie Irving, Kawhi Leonard. These are all base rookie cards. And then, of course, you had, you know, not a rookie card, but some joke it's his prism rookie card, is LeBron James. Now, again, if you collect long enough and you enjoy what you're collecting because you, you enjoy collecting rookie cards like I do, these were not expensive. Nothing I've shown you here tonight has been expensive. And again, that's all relative, but you know, I think the most expensive card I've shown you here is uh, 40 bucks for these. I think this I paid 40 for this. I think that's the most. This was less. Yeah, this might have been 50. I don't remember. It was probably 40 though. You collect long enough and you enjoy what you're collecting. You know that forget about the naysayers say. You know, oh, what are you collecting base graded rookie cards for, Eric? You're an idiot. Well, here we are. It's because I enjoy it. It's what I consider affordable. I highly recommend uh, I highly recommend Prism. Prism is expensive, I'm not denying that getting more expensive every day uh, but for continuity section uh, sake you know tops chrome also basketball also started in 2000 uh, I'm sorry in 1996 you know and, and went through 2009 grab the wrong one so 2009 they lost their license they stopped making tops, stopped making basketball cards, they stopped making chrome, obviously. So from 96 until 2009, pretty much every rookie is represented in tops chrome form. So if you want to collect base rookie cards in uh, chromium technology, you know, prism. Prism is going to be the way to go. I mean, you could also do, I don't have a, you could also, then, you know, all right, let me finish first. You know, so year after year, you could just collect the rookie cards. and you, Or you could collect the red, white, and blues as well. 
because the red, white, and blues, like I said, were never really popular. And technically, they're still not. I didn't. I have a Luca that. I have a Luca red, white, and blue. I didn't bring it out. But again, I collect these because I enjoy them. You know, these were. You don't want to know what I paid for these three put together. I won't even say it. <laughs> but there are a lot more now. There's also Optic Basketball, which also started in 2016. And then they have the Hollows. I just decided I'll... This is the uh, pretty much the refractor version, or the silver. But again, same like the football. These started in 2016, so they're missing a lot of key rookies. I mean, and it doesn't... Oh, here's perfect. You can tell it does not have etching. It's a nice-looking card, don't get me wrong. It's super shiny. But, I mean, it would look a lot better with Boston, the Zero, the Basketball, all having etching would make that look a lot better. So if you can't do, if you can't do Prism, which is totally understandable now given the price point, but in my opinion that is the go-to flagship rookie. Oh, also I forgot to mention for football, you could do score football. But a lot of people are not into the co the collegiate uniforms. So score football, which has been around since 1989 every year, and is to this day because Panini bought the rights to score and releases it as such. You could do score football, and that's extremely affordable. Brady is not extremely costly. Now, speaking of Panini buying rights to names and putting them out, we have another viable basketball option, other than you know Donruss, which also Don. Well, let's see, Donruss, Donruss basketball is tricky because it started in 2010. Panini brought it in 2010. They brought it back. Then they didn't put it out again until 2014. So they left. They did not like a 2012 Donruss. Think about that. That would have been epic with the class they had. The double class, in fact. But from 14 onward, Donruss has now exist. But there's, there's that that three-year gap where it didn't exist. But the other brand I'm going to talk about tonight is the Hoops. Now, Hoops pretty much started. Hoops started in 89 with David Robinson. Those of you who have been around a long time know what I'm talking about. And then they went to it went through a couple of changes along the way. But is now under since it's under Panini, it's back to being the hoops we all <coughs> know and love pretty much. Some of them are going to be costly, like this. Like you want a LeBron hoops rookie. I mean, it's called Hoops Hot Prospects. It was a set. There's so many. You know, people think, oh my goodness, there's so many releases now with Zion and Ja Morant. It's nothing compared to 2003 when LeBron came around and. They invented brand new sets just to sell LeBron cards and everybody else. But this is his hoops. It's an embossed card right here. The logo, the Cavs logo. It's embossed. You can't really tell on the camera. But these are these are numbered to 1,000 on the back. So it's a pretty limited run of hoops. LeBron rookies. There's a insert called Cream of the Crop, I believe. It's a horizontal card. It is not a rookie card, but it is a rookie year issue. I mean, that's a whole nother debate. But, you know, these are individually numbered on the back. To 1,000. So I added this a few years ago. It wasn't very costly at the time. You know, it is now. So I'm happy to have that in the collection. 2012, they did make hoops. And here's the uh, Anthony Davis, you know. Kawhi is in it, Clay, uh, Lillard, everybody who is in the in the uh, prison that I show them, they have a hoops equivalent. And I, I want to say in raw form, these are not that expensive. I don't know. I don't. That's another thing with myself. I, I collect something, and then once I own it, it's time to move on to something else to collect because it's always collecting because it brings me joy to collect and I am guilty like many people of uh, 
you know, it's not stopping the smell of the roses or such, but, but, uh, you know, here's a Giannis in a nine. And again, 2012, it's been out every year. Actually, it's been out every year since 89 in one incarnation. Incarnation, yeah, I think that's the word. Or another, like the, that LeBron was a, you know, hot pro, hoops, hot prospect. So they, they changed, they rebranded it there, but they brought it back. And, uh, you know, here's the Luca from uh, two years ago now. Well, last year, technically, for the brand, but. And uh, a shout out to a friend that gave this, to, he gifted this to me back when, uh, <laughs> when, when nines were irrelevant because nines were irrelevant for, you know, if you've been, you know, if you've been a friend of the channel for a long time or you've been a friend of mine for a long time, you know, I've been screaming about PSA nine. Well, fine nines, BGS as well. Fine nines being undervalued. You no, know, those days are gone now. There's, there's no secret in that anymore. There's a, a multiplier of a, you know, you would, for, for argument's sake, you know, you know, just, just for round numbers, you know, you know, this would be twenty dollars when a ten would be two hundred dollars. You know that that was there were that was more common than you would think. Like the price gap between a nine and a ten, where for the most part you can't tell the difference, it was absurd for a collector like myself. So I went ahead and bought the nines. But now we're at the price point now where nines are out of control. And that's a whole another topic for another time. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's episode. I am very appreciative of you spending your time with me telling my stories and things. Remember to always be kind, keep learning, share your knowledge, and cherish your collection.